In this video, I'll show you how to run exploratory factor analysis using ZASP. So for this purpose, I'm going to use a sample data set. Data set citation is given in the description of this video. You can also check it for more details about the data. Um, or you can also visit the uh, particular site to download the paper to understand something more about how I have measured my job satisfaction construct, family satisfaction and so on. So basically here I have item level information for four of my constructs. Uh, one is job satisfaction. Job satisfaction is measured using three items. And then family satisfaction is measured using another three item. Life satisfaction is measured using another five items. And then work family balance is measured using another five items. So this is all the information I have. So in order to run the factor analysis, you go to factor and then click exploratory factor analysis. Now you just include the items into the variables box. So you include the items up to work family balance. Not this one. Yeah. So here the analysis which I'm trying to do is uh, let me select the principal axis factoring with the pro max rotation. I would like to do this. If you know the number of factors to be extracted uh, on prior basis, like if you go by the theory or maybe if you are sure about like number of factors which you are going to estimate directly, you can also give that value here. So in this case, I'm expecting four factors. So you can define four. If you are doing scale development process and if you don't know like how many factors uh, we are going to get it. So if that is the case, you can uh, run the factor analysis using eigenvalues. So here you can fix eigenvalue above one as a value and then you can run it. That is also another option. So now let me select this manual provision. In the outputs, I need, I just want to see the values which is coming above 0.5. So you, you can suppress the rest of the values using this particular button. And uh, you can also ask for the path diagram, scree plot you can ask, KMO test, Bartlett test also you can ask. Now you go and check the output. So here my first factor, I mean work family balance is loaded on the first factor. Life satisfaction is loaded on the second factor. Family satisfaction is loaded on the third factor. And then, sorry, it is updating the results. Yeah. And then job satisfaction is loaded on the fourth factor. This is how I'm getting the results. So this KMO test is uh, essential in terms of checking the sampling adequacy. If overall MSA, that is measure of sampling adequacy value is above 0.7 means you can say that we are having sufficient information in our hand in terms of estimating the factor solution. And if you look at the path diagram, this is what your uh, path diagram associated with this factor analysis. And scree plot is really useful whenever you are trying to do the analysis for the first time without having any idea about the number of factors which you are going to estimate. So up to one eigenvalue, whatever, wherever the uh, shape is, uh, uh, I mean, wherever you are getting the sharp bend, up to that level, you can retain the factors. So approximately here, I can retain one, two, three, four factors. So that's the reason why I'm also getting four factor solution here. This is the way how you can also run the factor analysis. For reporting purpose, you need to report the loading values factor loading values so basically this factor loadings are nothing but the relationship between this item and then this factor is represented with the help of this particular coefficient value uh, you have to report this factor loading and you have to report this uh, measure of sampling adequacy value and this bottle test uh, value should be significant basically so the reason why we are trying to do this bottle test here is we are making an assumption stating that there exists some level of uh, uh, orthogonality. I mean, uh, there is a concept called identity matrix. And uh, uh, if your uh, matrix is, I mean, the raw observation matrix is identity in nature means you, you may not be able to estimate the factor loadings. So in order to test this assumption only, we are trying to do this. So basically here, the null hypothesis is the factors are orthogonal in nature. Alternate hypothesis is the factors are not orthogonal in nature. So basically here we are rejecting the null because the p-value is significant 
and uh, we are accept in turn we are accepting the alternate hypothesis so which means that there exists some level of correlation among the uh, uh, items in order to estimate the factor loadings so this is how you can conclude this particular result and for reporting purpose uh, you have to report this MSA bottle test value and then the factor loadings in the form of a component table that's it thank you